Mental Fox here with more Starfield. Thanks for joining me again. We're here in House Varun. We're doing this quest where we need to speak with this ambassador here. Uh, well, yeah, we're supposed to. Whoa. Um, well, it's kind of gone now. But anyway, there's this um, ambassador person we're supposed to talk to in here where uh, once we talk to them, we're supposed to get approval from them to get into the archives. But now we've entered the embassy and something's gone down in here, man. We're following these uh, voices over an intercom, throwing power switches. Another power switch down. Once I threw it, though, the voice moved to a different spot in the embassy. Guess I should follow. That's what we're going to do. We are going to follow. Oh, gosh, I'm almost out of ammo for this weapon as well. Look at that. We got 86. Um, this uses, yeah, 7.77 millimeter ammo. The same stuff that... Barrett uses. That could be a problem. Well, let's, um, I thought that the voice said to go upstairs, so let's go upstairs first, and hopefully we can find some terminals that'll allow us to shut off the, uh, security. Although we've already been up here. We already triggered, triggered, triggered the, uh, robots in the turrets, so, um, not good. Serpent nearly there, he says. I guess Barrett already took out all these guys. Looks like maybe there's some cubicles up here? Maybe. Chunks. I will consume them. Here is a plushy parsa -po parsec pooch. I don't know if I'm supposed to be collecting these guys or not. They make a delightful sound when I pick them up. You couldn't hear it that time, though. Ooh, light particle fuse. Light particle fuse. Here's a Nova light again. Mind the defense is active, he says. So again, like in the last episode, I'm going to go into my ammo. Up to 482 in light particle fuse. And then I'm going to try to pick this weapon up again. Okay. And then I'll go into my ammo. It still says 482, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. But that weapon I just picked up, I might have to use because I am running very low on... Um... Oh, this uses heavy fuse. No, that's, that's not what I picked up. It is this Nova Light that I picked up. I don't know. This thing probably isn't going to do a whole lot. Oh, good. There's some more chunks over here. Oh, turret. Find anything worth selling or using? Mind your own business. Hey, um, when you're not busy, let's chat. Oh, good grief. I have to listen to that now. <laughs> he wants to talk about something, and I really doubt it's about what we're going through here. Oh, headed basement caution, huh? What's that? Okay, there's the next intercom. That's cool. Got a supply shelf here. Anything good in it? Eh, it doesn't look like it does it. What about... No, nothing I want there. Not interested in that sun sculpture. Uh, there's Paramore. Tape measure, some tape. Ooh. Boy, there's light particle fuse ammo all over this place. Oh man. Destroyed his terminal, man. Another Nova light there. There's a door there. Come follow to me. Is this it? Nope, that ain't it. I guess I'll do this one. All right, he wants me to hurry. But first, let's check our, our quest list. The voice led me to yet another power switch. Sounds like I should throw this one as well. Oh. Beware D. 
demons, he said. Okay. Beware demons. Don't like the sound of that. What was that noise? Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, we have to hack this one, too. Oh, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but let's go ahead. Well, maybe it does matter. So what matters? What am I talking about? Well, I, um, I did my 15 to 15 locks, so rank 3 is now available. So let's go ahead and spend our skill point on this. It will allow us to attempt to hack master level locks. Oot. And now it wants us to pick 30 more to get to rank 4. Do I want to get to rank 4? Uh, expend a digit pick to eliminate keys that aren't required to solve the puzzle. Five auto attempts can be banked. I don't know. But anyway, I need to pick 30 locks to unlock this rank. And this one right here in front of us could be lock number 1. So let's go ahead and get in here. Let's see, this one here is for the outer ring. Could be any of them. This one fits in both. This one is outer ring only. That does fit there. And I bet you that this is the next one for the inner outer ring. So we've got this one, that one, and then in here, we've got, that would fit and oops oops all right starware update fred phone setting fred friend foe settings um recalibrate protect current user thank you activate turrets Activated. Okay, so now we've got these turrets that are going to protect us. Which is helpful. Absolutely helpful. Um, well... <sighs> Barrett, I know you want to talk, so maybe this room here is a good place as any to talk. Like I said, I doubt he wants to talk about this current mission we're on, but just in case he does, I'm going to go ahead and talk to him. But not before I look around this room a little bit. I was kind of hoping I might find some snacks in here to snack on, because you can see my health isn't the best. Why don't I just go ahead and use a health item? I don't know. I just want to see if there's some food around here. Hey, uh, Barrett, come over here in the light so I can see you when I talk to you. Come here. Come over here. Barrett, come here. I just wanted to say thanks for the daring rescue back there. I had plans for Matsura. Of course, but I appreciate the backup. Uh-huh. Refresh my memory, Matsura? You know, that Crimson Fleet pirate who held me oh. captive for a bit a while ago. I just appreciated how you rescued me. That's all. Okay. Why don't you thank me with some credits? What would you have done without me? It wasn't a big deal. Don't worry about it. Poor guy's waiting for us to rescue him. Um, you know, what would you have done without me? Oh, I would have given them an exhaustive series of lectures on a neutronic fusion until they were either delirious or they became my new students, obviously. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you could thank me with some credits. I probably spent quite a few credits going there to rescue you, you know. I could, but it doesn't feel right. Oh. You're part of the family now, and we take care of each other. Oh. Okay. Doggone it. I, so, something appeared up here and up here at the same time. I looked up here and saw an update. Okay. But I unfortunately didn't see what this one said. Uh, anyway, uh, it wasn't a big deal. Don't worry about it. Well, it left a lasting impression on me, I suppose. So many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you can trust is important. That's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out when you're in a jam. Okay. Um, exactly how often do you get into jams, Barrett? Exactly as often as I need to. Jams are just sticky successes, right? At first it seems annoying, but it eventually washes off. Okay. Well, um, I guess I put my trust in people, not organizations. That's smart. Trust in things that are capable of trusting you. 
Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I don't trust anyone until they earn it. Mutual trust, that's the key. Or I trust everyone until they prove me wrong. Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to say that my character probably doesn't trust anyone until they earn it. Hmm. Well, fair enough. Seems kind of lonely, but you're less vulnerable. Safer. That's not my style, but I can respect it. We have all sorts of folks in Constellation, after all. Speaking of which, I'm glad you joined Constellation. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> yak, yak, yak. Uh, let's see here. How long have you been in Constellation? Anyway, we could try to flirt with him and say, you've certainly made my time in Constellation very enjoyable. Because I don't know what to say or thank you, Barrett. I don't know. How long have you been in Constellation? A long time. We should talk about it someday. I'd need to get some tea going for that chat, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Neither do I. Yet I muster forth. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a lot of opportunities. And a fair bit of stress, I'll admit. It's hard to imagine just who I'd be had I never joined up. I would have never done so many things. Met so many people. It's mind-boggling how different I would be. And I never would have met Irvin. Or lost him, I suppose. Uh, who's Irvin? Irvin Madani was my husband. He was also a brilliant biologist who joined Constellation a couple of years before me. Yeah, so he's gone now. <laughs> I, I remember his bright smiles when I returned from my trips. <laughs> wow. More brilliant than any star. Mm, what was he like? That's kind of you to ask. People used to say that we were polar opposites. He was quiet and shy, they said. But that wasn't true. He was just that way around everyone else. Mm, what happened to him? The war happened. He was caught in the crossfire between the UC and the Free Star Collective. It was right after he finished the job on Gagarin. Some terrible job, I don't remember. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Um, well... Um, you know, it's impossible to know what could have happened. That's right. We can't know the consequences of the choices we never made. And anything beyond that is imagination alone. But for the choices we made, it feels just a bit closer, doesn't it? Urban's been gone for over 20 years. Strange how memories can pop up when you least expect it. It's pretty strange. Why do you think it's suddenly back in your thoughts? Well, I'm enjoying my time adventuring with you, and it reminds me of Urban in a way. We had so many adventures together, and then it suddenly stopped. Maybe part of my mind is trying to remind me of that. Um, well, why don't you tell me a good memory of Irvin? Hmm. Right, let's see. He was a biologist, specialized in botany. He loved plants. For years, he carried one with us on trips like it was our pet. <laughs> he even named it. <laughs> Haven't thought about that in a while. Well, maybe I'll take you up on that offer later on, Captain. I need some time to think about things. On that note, I think I'd do well to distract myself with a little adventure for a bit. Oh, now isn't the best time. Oh, jeez, he still needs to talk. It's the only reason I talked to him, so he would stop saying that. I'm not really sure how you would, um, you know, program a game so that, you know, if you have a companion that wants to talk to you about something, maybe he would wait until you're not in the middle of a quest to talk to you, but you're always in the middle of quests. So I'm not really sure what the solution would be, but to me, it takes... I mean, as much as realism as there can be in a video game, especially one like this, it takes some of the realism away. Like, if we were really, me, my character, and Barrett were really running through here looking for this guy, there's a sense of urgency. He's like, hurry, hurry. He's warning us about demons. We've fought robots and turrets, you know. I, I think the last thing somebody would do would be like, 
oh, hey, man, when you get a moment, I need to talk to you. And then you talk to him and he talks about something completely different. He wants to have this long conversation with you while the person who is asking for rescue is literally on the intercom asking us for help. You know, I, I don't know how you program a game to make things a little bit more realistic, but that was very much not realistic. And now he wants to talk to us again anyway, so you're just going to have to wait, Parrot. Oh, and another door we have to unlock, so uh, let's go ahead and um, unlock this door. Let's see. Uh, that one doesn't do anything. This one both. This one is only on the in, inner ring. Hmm. So it says... Am I missing something here? Oh, okay, there we go. So it goes there, which would mean that perhaps this one. Okay, so I have my two inner ring ones. I don't have any that only go on the outer ring. That fits on the outer ring. Ah, shoot. Oh, okay, there we go. That one. That one. Oops. That one. That one. You're done? Impressive. Oh, just took us right back out to this room. <laughs> the room we were already in. Could have saved myself some time. But oh well, we need we need to pick locks. We need to pick locks. We need to practice. Okay, so he's pointing us back down this way, so we're gonna go back out here. Back into this room. And back down here. And down here. And now we're going to go downstairs. All right. Let's hit F5. In case something terrible happens. Oh, here's the next intercom right here. What's up? Beware Guardian's basement must eliminate. I approached another intercom in the basement. But this one had a warning about guardians. I guess I should be cautious as I proceed inside. Well, let's see how... You know what, I'd better take some health. Let's see how this weapon does. I'm not expecting much. I hear movement. Oh, there is something over there. Oh, it's a robot over there. Is that... an enemy? Eliminate the robots. Oh, I am supposed to eliminate robots. Okay. Oh, jeez. Ouch. It's on fire. That's kind of cool. Okay, we got him. That was kind of fun. I was wondering when we'd get to this. I was wondering when we'd get to this. I've got some time to kill. I've done this, a <laughs> this weapon is not great, but I have a ton of ammo for it, so I'm going to keep using it. Come and get it. I mean, the robots are kind of cute. They're like little little gazelles approach the stranger. Both robots are dead, and an old man's come out from a chamber on this floor. Could he be Ambassador Balmore? I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. Where is he? Where's the old man? There's a door there, but it's locked. Requires a key. Hey, man. Are you Ambassador Balmore? You gotta be, right? So... What seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> a reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Okay. Ambassador Kazrick Balmore. Yeah, but is there stuff for me to loot down here? I mean, you know, I don't want to miss out on loot. Yeah. Trauma pack, ammo, ammo, it's payment for rescuing you, dude. Is 
a robot in the tree? Yep, I've already looted it, it looks like. So now, I found Ambassador Balmore alive and kicking. He invited me to speak with him, or to him. How's he been living down here all this time? Ooh, inside the viper's nest. Warning, this film utilizes archival footage that many viewers may find disturbing. Discretion is advised. Oh, the incredible true story of the Serpent's Crusade. Ooh. Okay, so he's been like in a storage room. Well, at least he's got, had some space in here. It's not too cooped up, I don't feel like. All right, dude. Let's uh, let's have a little chat, Ambassador Kazarik Balmore. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? Tell me though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, then the embassy was struck with a power surge and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> we could say the spaceport is in rough shape, but not much else was damaged. We could say <laughs> everywhere in the city is in better shape than this dump. We could say, is that what happened here? A power surge? Or um, did you say that thing pouring out clouds upstairs is called a venom tree? Is it poisonous? Yeah. Venom tree? Harmless spores. You have my word, but uh, hard to navigate. Hence why I was guiding you through the intercoms to restore the environmental controls <laughs> and release me. It is the sap of the tree that gives it its... well, <laughs> perhaps not a topic for this exact moment. But I must know of the rest of the city. Does it still stand? Um, yeah, but I mean, was there a power surge in here? I take it you didn't have such an experience where you were then, hmm? Yes, the entire embassy was thrown into lockdown, trapping me in my quarters, disabling the Venom Tree's filters, and arming the defenses. A disconcerting experience, to say the least. Was the rest of the city spared? So, when we talked with, uh, I think Deputy McIntyre, she made it sound like this they haven't heard from this guy in a long time. Like, they weren't even sure if he was still alive. And now it sounds like he was fine until the Terramorph attack, which locked him down here in the basement. That was just like yesterday. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. The spaceport is in rough shape, but not much, not much else was damaged. Is that right? Huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah, uh, an archive code. So the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably. Hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Mm, let's see. Bingo, hand over your code so I can get out of this place. Or, we're going to ensure something like this never happens again, and we need your code to do it. Or, correct, we're going to use the data in the archives to better understand and stop these attacks. We're going to go with that one. Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks... There is logic there. But if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. 
with little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. Uh huh. Well, um, let's uh, let's have a little chat with this guy. We could say knowledge can be knowledge can't be evil. What about the knowledge of say gunpowder? Well, I think it's kind of a silly question, but let's see how he responds to it. <sighs> a fine counterexample, responsible for the deaths of millions on ancient Earth, and. Uh... Fireworks? Absolutely capable of being put to violence, but not evil in itself. And here you are with a similar conundrum. I might be willing to support you if I knew I would not be tarnishing the legacy of House Varun by doing so. Okay, I don't quite understand where he's going with this. I could say that's an impossible request. You know, I can't know how exactly this will all play out. Or... <laughs> You're just an old man in a basement. You don't get to tell me what to do, Ambassador. Well, I'm not going to say that, so I guess that's an impossible request. We oh. cannot know all the results of one section, certainly, but intentions, those we can command. I want you to assure me yours are noble ones. Right before I clicked uh, a button, I saw that there was a little teeny tiny, like, well, it goes away. Right, I saw that right there, which indicates there's more up above. Um. So yeah, fine, you have my word. I'll make sure it's used for good. I mean, that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to use it to stop terror morphs. You've got my word, too. I swear, if this goes awry, there will be hell to pay. Well, then, I shall not fear. Please, follow me. Okay. All right, we're going to follow him. Quest now says... Eh, the ambassador has agreed to help me. I should follow him. So he's like, I'll give you this code so long as it's used for good, so long as it, like, helps with House Varun's legacy. I mean, I guess he's saying don't use this code to weaponize terror morphs because it'll make House Varun look bad? I guess. All right, let's follow this guy. Yeah. Let's go in here. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a fridge up here. Hold on a minute. I want to eat some of your food. I'm kind of hungry. It still works. Orange juice. For me, right? Oh. Oh. I was caught stealing. I didn't say it was stealing. Let that for crying out loud. Good. Fine. Thanks. The, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, if there was a, 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 a stealing icon there, I did not see it. So, I've got both codes in hand. Time to return to Deputy McIntyre to collect the UC's archival code. I will not have House Varun be known only for slaughter. Yeah, well, you, you might want to look inside your own house, buddy. Uh, let's see, the Great Serpent, that's your god, right? Or what's it been like? being from House Varun in New Atlantis, or would you, why'd you stay behind? Or so why'd the rest of the embassy staff leave where'd they go? I don't know, let's start at the bottom. The Great Serpent, tell me about it. The Great Serpent is so much more than a god. It is fate itself. When our founder, Jinan Varun, left the United Colonies 140 years ago for distant stars, it was the serpent that compelled him to found his now great house. The serpent made us who we are today. Its voice speaks to us, shepherding us through the dark and infuses our lives with the meaning the universe so often fails to provide. Mm hmm. What's it been like being from House Varun in New Atlantis? It was tolerable, even pleasant, when my brethren were here in the embassy with me. We remade this place as best we could into a home we all would recognize native flora, our iconography, our connection to the serpent, they came with us. With my brethren gone, it has been trying. But the great serpent has always provided me a path in my darkest moments. Why did you stay behind? House Varun committed itself to the armistice. 
This was said at the time to be the desire of the Great Serpent, and I do not believe the Serpent decides such things on a whim. So, when my brethren left, I remained, honoring the Serpent's will as I saw fit, as is the right of all his followers. So why did the rest of the Embassy staff leave? Where'd they go? The affairs of House Varun are our own. They left. That is all there is to be said on the subject. Okay, nice talking to you. Oh, see you later, bye! Right. Oh, there's a terminal here on the wall, a personal computer. Let's look at it. Let's just... Oh, good grief. Okay. Uh, we got all kinds of logs here. Log 1, Arrival. Yesterday marked the beginning of my tenure as House Varun's ambassador in the United Colonies. I arrived full of hope, believing our gesture of opening this new embassy would demonstrate that we had moved beyond our blood-stained past. But we had barely been in New Atlantis an hour when the troubles ahead of me began to reveal themselves. Our brief walk from the spaceport to the embassy was marked by suspicious glances and sneers from numerous strangers on the street. I fear minds here will not be easily changed. The wrongdoing of House Varun will not be so easily forgotten. It is my fervent wish that this embassy will come to be seen as an emblem of a peaceful future, free of the stains of prejudice and violence. I will do my utmost to act as an avatar for that goal, regardless of any resistance I may face. Though I find myself in a strange land, I know the Great Serpent will guide us to success in our endeavor. Log 2 Protests This morning I was roused from contemplative prayer by the sound of muffled shouting. Upon investigation, I discovered a sizable group of United Colonies citizens engaged in a protest on my doorstep. They are supposed... Uh, they are opposed to their government's attempts to establish diplomatic ties with House Varun and are petitioning for the immediate shuttering of the embassy. My attempts to engage them in discussion were fruitless. Most would not speak with me, and those who did refused to believe that our intentions on New Atlantis were purely peaceful. The embassy guards were eventually required to intervene, forcing me back into the building when the crowd's anger began to manifest as threats to my well-being. I intend to discuss this matter with my counterparts in the United Colonies. Their aid will be essential if this effort is to succeed, though I fear this will not be an isolated incident. Log 3, A Visitor Each day my frustration grows. Great serpent, what have I done to merit such scorn? Recently, Sian Mavan arrived at my embassy. To receive a visit from such a high-ranking priestess, a gravid no less, with the intention of engaging in talks with the United Colonies, I was overjoyed. Such a gesture from the House could only mean those skeptical of our efforts could at long last see merit in our work. But it seems I was deceived. Sia's stated mission and her actual intentions are clearly at odds. She has refused every opportunity to engage with representatives from the United Colonies. Instead, she speaks incessantly. <laughs> incessantly? about the need to surveil the very diplomats whose trust I have dedicated months of effort to gaining. She remains trapped in our old mindset, unable to see what it is we are actually doing here, guaranteeing House Varun's future. The losses from the Serpent's Crusade were incalculable. Diplomacy is the only method through which House Varun's survival may be assured. I must find a way to make Sion see this. Luckily, I believe tonight's dinner will be the perfect opportunity our UC host, Deputy Diplomat Roland, is level-headed. Reasonable, I'd dare say even sympathetic. A rare animal among the UC if prior experience is to be any indicator. If Sia approaches him with open arms, I have faith that he would embrace her as a comrade. Great Serpent, let this come to pass. Log 4, Dinner Great Serpent, is this a test of my faith? Do you truly wish to plumb the depths of my loyalty? What other explanation could merit why you would permit such a spectacular disaster? Dinner at Deputy Roland's house was initially promising, even congenial. Yes, there were pointed question about, questions about House Varun's intentions, but overall an air of polite decorum was maintained. But it was when one of Roland's more boisterous guests, an officer of some type, perhaps having enjoyed one too many glasses of Chandra, asked, but how can we trust you snakes after what you did? That I believed the gravid reached her breaking point. They were only words, but words of the battlefield on which diplomacy is fought, and I realized too late 
that this was a salvo Sia would not let pass. As dessert was served, Sia excused herself. We waited for her return, and waited, and waited. When it had become clear the gravid had simply left, I made my pleasantries and rushed back to the embassy. There I found her packing her things. When I asked where she was going, she stated simply, I have seen all I need to, and she left without another word. I've reached out to my contacts back in Dazra, who have assured me that they still believe in the venture, that Jarek Varun himself still believes, and that is all the reassurance I require. Log 5 attests to faith. The last of my staff have left today, our embassy now effectively shuttered. House Varun's leaders have ceased all communications with the United Colonies. Our own orders from Dazra were not much better, standing as a single word, return. No other reason mentioned for our abandonment of our post, for the abandonment of our cause. But I know a test of faith when I see one. I serve House Varun. A simple understanding of that directive would be that I follow their orders. But what we do here is greater than that. If we are to survive, it cannot be on our own. If others refuse to see that, so be it. So here I stand, waiting for the day they all see the truth and come back. Log 6, Silence. There has been no word from my people in months. I have made several attempts at contacting them, but I am uncertain if my messages are reaching Dazra at all. As such, I have had much time to think. Why allow us to come here, make a home for ourselves around a distant star, only to demand our return when the first bit of resistance is met? Because of some drunken slight? Even Sia is not that influential amongst the court. No, there is something larger at play here. The recalling of the staff. It wasn't because of the incident with the gravid. A change has occurred. Yet by staying, I now may never know what it is. Only time will tell. Log 7. Spies. It seems it's been quite some time since my last entry. A welcome bit of exercise today. A United Colonies spy snuck inside the embassy. Just before dawn, as I finished my morning prayers, I heard an odd thrum. At first, I presumed my hearing was finally giving out, but then I realized what it was. It was the elevator descending. Presuming uninvited guests could mean only bad things. I snuck upstairs and hid among the branches of the venom tree. I watched, like a gargoyle perched on a parapet, as the young man stalked cautiously through the branches of the tree I'd spent so much time cultivating, obviously scared beyond his wits. At one point, an errant branch snapped as he passed, and I swear the boy leapt a foot into the air before realizing its source benign. I was shocked that the mere idea of House Varun could still garner such fear even this long after the end of the Serpent's Crusade. It would have been amusing if it wasn't such a clear reminder of the failure of my own endeavor. We evaded each other like this for the better part of two hours. It was a welcome distraction from a life now steeped in routine. He eventually gave up, returned to the elevator, and I to my meditation. As I think on it now, however, the purpose of the visit was exceedingly disappointing. This was no diplomat, no neighborly knock on the door. This was a spy, someone breaking into somewhere a normal soul couldn't. They think me dead, don't they? Finally, Log 8, a surprising message. It's happened! The message was short, a simple request for information regarding the state of things in New Atlantis, but filled me with relief nonetheless. House Varun has contacted me at long last. I had been forced to harden my heart to the possibility that I may never hear from my people again. Today's message assuaged that fear. Though their intentions remain unclear, I am comforted by House Varun's willingness to re-engage in communication. I am hopeful that it signifies Dazra's willingness to return to more earnest attempts at diplomacy with the United Colonies. Great Serpent, you answer my prayers at, Lance, at last. I stand firm in my belief that it will be at my side as I continue to serve House Varun's interests in New Atlantis. May his celestial light bathe my people and those we once stood against and help to usher in an era of harmony at last. We just stood there and read that right in front of this guy, <laughs> which I find hilarious. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so that would be stealing. This over here, I mean, it doesn't say stealing. Yeah, look. Yeah, I just helped myself to that stuff, so I don't know what was up with that other thing being stealing, but... 
I guess when I go back to the surface, I'm going to have to pay a bounty for eating some food out of this guy's locker. Now, that does say stealing. So, I, maybe it did say stealing. I don't know. It seems pretty random here. I don't know why some things are stealing and some aren't. But, hey, we may never know. So, can I talk to him again? The great serpent guide your path. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. The imaginary snake will guide my path. You've been sleeping on this cot, dude? That doesn't seem very comfortable. At least you've got a cot, though. Oh, he's got a display projector here. He could... Watch some uh, antique videotapes, maybe, on the screen over there. Oh. Oh, okay, it's a skip pack and a crew pack. I don't need that crap. I don't need that crap. Well, let's go ahead and get out of here and head on back up. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, uh, okay, it does have a little stealing icon there. Okay. So, I very well could have missed where it said it was stealing. My bad. My bad. Sorry about that, House Varun. Now I'm going to end up paying an incredible amount of money for that stupid thing that I ate. I was hungry, man. House Varun was just going to let me starve. Can I go through here? Okay. Uh, I guess we just go back the way we came. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what the hell, man? Okay, why do you have to stand in the doorway? My way around here. Yeah, this is just a bathroom. this way we didn't even get a chance to ask him about the freaking mannequin man all right here's the elevator choose floor okay we're back on the first floor I mean we have to explore this place while we're here we may never be able to come back in here right so we're gonna we're gonna explore it. Oh, that's not a door. I thought that was a door. Uh, let's get on the elevator and go up the next up to the next level. Check it out. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, maybe. Anything good up here? Just a coffee mug. Nice view of the atrium here. Oh, that's it. That's the whole second floor. Well, that was disappointing. All right, let's get out of here. weird place for an embassy, but hey, whatever. Man, it's still nighttime out here? Jeez. Alright, let's go over here. Want to challenge your instincts and hone those corporate skills? Ryujin is hiring the best and brightest of today for our future tomorrow. Yeah, we actually applied for a position at Ryujin. Yeah, we actually did. Uh, let's just go this way. We're gonna go over here and stand by this light, and we're gonna talk with Barrett because he wants to have a little chat again. I believe, if I look at my um, activities. Oh no, we—that's weird. I could have swore he wanted to talk, but I don't see any mention of it unless it's a, a new quest that I didn't see show up. But no, I don't see anything. Well, let's see. If I talk to him. Hey, Barrett. 
You're handling this whole captain thing really well, you know. Thanks. Hey, do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? What's on your mind? Uh, well, I mean, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about Irvin. I'm so fascinated by Irvin. It's a difficult topic. For years, I pretended like I was over it. But I'm not. I can't guarantee I can answer everything, but I want to try. Okay. Did he work with Constellation also? Yes, he was one of the first people I met when I moved into the lodge. His room used to be full of plants. The humidity was hard to get used to. I see. Um, can you tell me a bit about Irvin? Irvin Madani was my husband. He was also a brilliant biologist who joined Constellation a couple of years before me. Yeah, so he's gone now. <laughs> I... I remember his bright smiles when I returned from my trips. <laughs> wow. More brilliant than any star. Uh-huh. Yeah, you already said all that. Okay, thanks for talking about Irvin with me. Thanks for listening. Did you have any other personal questions, or was that it? No, that's it. That's it. Always a pleasure. Well, okay then. Okay then. Let's, um... Walk back over here to, to Mast. I mean, isn't there an elevator up there that I could also take? I wonder why it takes me to this elevator down here instead. And also, this elevator here seems completely different place than that one up there, but whatever. Back to the top. Alright, we need to go back in there and talk to the deputy, but we will do that in the next episode. She's busy right now. We need to sit here and wait. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just need to wait our turn. We're a little early for our appointment. Uh, um, It's kind of weird. You stand right there, Barrett. Barrett, Barrett could you not stand right? Oh gosh, I, I do not like the way he's looking at me. Do you, are you seeing this? kind of weird. Anyway, go to end this episode here. Come back next time, we'll go in and we'll talk to uh, the deputy, and we'll see what is in store for us. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, I don't know, maybe let me know. Let me like or a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.